The ability to write in a clear and concise manner is important to reflect a good image to others about you and Meyer. In the fast-paced retail industry, correspondence must be direct and easily understood. There are three key ideas to keep in mind whenever you are formulating any type of business writing. First, consider who will be reading the document. Next, you should write how you speak to make the message sound natural and personal. Finally, be clear and concise so that the message will be easily understood by the reader. The four important aspects to business writing we'll be discussing are tone, word usage, structure, and power writing. Tone is the feeling the reader gets from your message. Your personality is reflected in your writing. We can't send temporary help to your area until March 27. You will just have to do without. Also, there is no way we can wait until the 20th of February to receive your proposal. We simply can't wait that long. The letter in this example came across aggressively because it was telling the reader what they had to do in a very blunt way. Does your writing tend to be passive, I understand, aggressive, I want, or assertive, I am, I will? it's important to develop a good assertive tone. You can achieve this by using an informal and relaxed writing style, yet being direct and to the point. Also, remember to be pleasant, but don't overuse please and thank yous. I know this is late notice, and it's probably going to be a major inconvenience, but the forms won't reach your store for at least another two weeks. Unfortunately, everything has just been all permanent. In that example, the letter had an unfavorable tone because the writer approached the situation negatively. Always try to take a positive approach to any situation. Anything that can be said negatively can also be said positively. It's a matter of phrasing. For example, instead of saying, we never close, how about, we are always open? Another example, no exceptions to this policy can be allowed, can be said just as effectively and more positively like this. We ask your assistance in following this policy. So you see, tone is something that you must be aware of before you begin to write. Turn to the section on tone in your workbook and test your skill at changing the tone of the statements. Stop this program now and begin. A nicely written letter can be ruined if the writer uses words improperly. I'm recapitulating the revised documentation. It's my understanding that due to recent alterations in standard procedural operations, There are several techniques you can use to give your writing a professional touch. Use of power verbs are a good idea. They help to express action, focusing on the present, not the past or future. Instead of saying, do an inspection, just say inspect. Enter a discussion can easily be replaced by the word discuss. Likewise, use the word conclude in place of reach a conclusion. By using clear, concise, correct words, you create a message that is easily understood and you end up writing less. If you use too many words, you waste your reader's time. If you use too few words, you'll confuse the reader. It is also important to avoid jargon which is any inflated language that states simple ideas in an unnecessarily complicated way. For example, instead of saying watch over continuously, say monitor. Or instead of saying with regard to, say about. It is also important to use verbs in an active voice. In other words, make the subject the doer of the act. 
For example, instead of saying the report was written by Sharon, say Sharon wrote the report. Or instead of saying food and general merchandise are sold by Meyer, say Meyer sells food and general merchandise. Using the active voice makes a sentence more action-oriented and more exciting for the reader. Words are also quite often misused, like and or. Try using only one of these words. Select the single word which leaves the intended sense of the sentence unchanged. As in this example, general merchandise and or foods buyers will be attending the workshop. It would be preferred to say, General merchandise and foods buyers will be attending the workshop. The words due to can be replaced with because of. For instance, delivery will be delayed one day due to the holiday. This sentence should really read, delivery will be delayed one day because of the holiday. The term prior to is another misuse of words. Use the word before. It's simple and straightforward. Stop the program now and try your skill on the word usage exercises in the workbook. Improper structure can easily confuse your reader. Using the skills you've learned regarding tone and word usage, it's time to put your message into a good structure like this one. The maximum length of a sentence should be between 17 and 20 words. Anything longer could become a run-on sentence. Remember, a sentence should contain only one complete thought. Finally, be sure to vary your sentence length and structure. It makes for more interesting reading. Next, eliminate deadwood. That is, remove any word or phrase that interferes with the clarity and reduces the impact of your writing. For instance, how about this statement? In order to improve security, we request that, effective immediately, no associates use the above subject doors for egress and ingress to the building. <laughs> Talk about Deadwood. That statement is full of it. Four words will do just fine here. Associates do not enter. Besides sentence structure and eliminating deadwood, paragraphs play an important part in the structure of your message. Paragraphs help divide thoughts into logical units. Each one must have its own idea, and every paragraph must support your specific objective. Then, all sentences should relate to the main idea and support the thought. It's time again to stop the program and try your hand at the structure exercises in the workbook. The last section of the program is coming up next, Power Writing. There is a trick to writing efficiently, and you'll find it in the word power. Plan, organize, write, edit, and review. The planning stage includes the steps you take before writing your message. Planning is a thinking process. You should consider your audience, a goal, and what information you want to convey. Remember, planning gives you a sense of direction by setting the stage. It also reduces your writing time and increases results. To plan, ask yourself the following questions. Who, what, when, where, why and how. Once the information is available, it must be put in some logical order that's easy to understand. Good organization skills are vital. To begin, Make an outline and keep in mind what format you'll use. Remember to always arrange the text in logical order. In the power section of your workbook, you'll find different examples of outline formats. Mind mapping is also helpful. 
Mind mapping entails writing down all your ideas in a group on paper, circling the major topics, then numbering them in order of importance. The purpose of the writing stage is to get a draft of the message on paper. Write the first draft as quickly as you can so your thoughts aren't lost in the transition from mind to pen. If you get stuck, leave space and go on to the next area. Don't allow your old writing habits to slow you down, and don't worry about mistakes. The major purpose of the editing stage is to find things you didn't notice when you wrote the draft. You should be as objective about the first draft as possible. It helps to pretend you are revising someone else's writing. Check for effective organization, clarity, tone, readability, and continuity. Also, watch for incorrect grammar, spelling, and punctuation. The last step to power writing would be the review refine stage. In this phase, you should polish the document up by attending to the fine points. In other words, be sure it sounds good, looks good, meaning not too cluttered, and is directed toward your reader. There should be no need for substantial rewrites at this point, only fine tuning. For one last writing exercise, stop the program and refer to the power writing section in your workbook. Play the tape after you finish the exercises to receive some closing information. There are plenty of business writing hints at the bottom of your pages in the workbook. Also, be sure to check the Meyer Standard Format section for a company-approved letter, memo, and outline styles. Use your workbook as a helpful guide for future reference. The Greg Reference Manual is also an excellent source, chock full of writing tips. There should be at least one Greg Reference Manual in every office department. If you don't have one in your department, talk to your first assistant. If you follow these writing techniques, your business correspondence will be easier to understand. Remember, keep things clear, direct, concise, and always consider your reader.